Do a quick audio video check, get uh, some quick house cleaning items out of the way. Wanted to uh, just make sure all the technology is working correctly tonight. Hey, Kevin, Polly, and for those of you who have not seen yet, tonight we are using the Q&A feature of Zoom here. So someone actually, Jay asked, can you enable the chat uh, in an ideal world? Yes, that is exactly what we want to do, but uh, for these very large, wide open registration webinars, we unfortunately in the past have had people uh, continue to try and spam, and uh, we just, we don't want to uh, risk anyone's you know, private information or anything like that. So sorry about that. But um, I'm going to be sitting here in the background answering questions. And when I do, uh, those of us at the office here, when we answer the questions, we do try to send those all out to everybody. So we'll hopefully be able to uh, at least help out in that way. So good evening. Hi, everything sounds good. Good sound and picture from Australia. Beautiful. All righty. So I uh, wanted to let you all know that we are also recording everything this evening, so don't have to worry about taking notes, doing your own recording, anything like that. This is all being recorded. We are going to fire out an email to uh, give you the link to that recording to review at your leisure. Um, also wanted to let you all know that this is uh, going to be a pretty interactive presentation tonight. John and David do definitely have a few things that they uh, want to go over, but plenty of time for questions and answers, and they'll let you know when that time has come. But feel free to, you know, send your questions in. Those of us at the office here are happy to answer as well. And John and David will be keeping an eye on the Q&A the entire time also. So thank you again for joining us. Without further ado, let's go ahead and turn things over to John and David. Awesome. Thank you, Daryl. I am going to grab the screen here. And we'll get this going. So first of all, um, welcome, everybody. Thanks, Daryl, again, for the awesome intro. And the uh, I can I can get lulled into uh, complacency by listening to the sound of your voice, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, I don't don't want to be uh, too stressed, especially after a day trading. For um, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about voodoo lines and RAF signals and, and stuff like that too. And just out of curiosity, how many people already in here already like are familiar with the voodoo lines, use the voodoo lines? Um, you can just put yes or no. I'm just kind of curious. Okay, so a, a healthy mix of people that have already got them, and then also. Um, so some nose and stuff like that too, which which is perfect. Okay, so what I want to talk about here, and we'll just kind of dive into this. And you know, and I I always like to say like, hey, this is about results, right? And so so far this year, um, my count is up six times. All right, started with one hundred seventeen thousand dollars. It's currently at seven hundred two thousand dollars, and you can see my PL year to date is six hundred seventy nine thousand dollars. And you might think, well, that maybe doesn't quite add up. Well, I've also once I hit um, over like something are over $400,000. I've also been wiring out 2.5% per week of my account balance. So I've also wired out $71,000. So whatever 702 plus 71 is, so 773. So my goal is by the end of the year to get to a million. And I'm probably just jeeks myself saying that, but it's being able to do it in such a way to show it. And, and just in case you think this is a doctored up graphic, I'll just bring my trade state, actual uh, thinkorswim account here. You can see the clock moving. I just took the screenshot, you know, right before uh, this happened. So anyway, this is not like, oh, you know, look what happened here. Um, it's just showing you like, hey, look, this if this stuff is working, you know, are, are we making money with it? And, and the answer is yes. And so then the question is like, okay, so how, what is it and, and how are you using it? Um, which is always, you know, helpful. Um, yeah, Kevin, I don't know if I get, so if I get to a million earlier than planned, and this is so stupid to talk like this, this is like total jinx, right? But, you know, obviously I want to trade it in such a way to, and you'll see like right now, I'm like, I'm traveling tomorrow and I'm mostly in cash, right? But I want to continue to trade this methodically and stuff like that too. So, so the question is then is what, um, you know, how, how is this happening, right? Because, you know, the markets, so what's driving the returns? Are these markets easy? I would say that these markets are not easy. Um, you know, I, someone said like, oh, it's easy to make money in a bull market. But, you know, this has been, uh, 
you know, I, I've definitely seen some swings and this has been a, the bull market that nobody believes, you know, nobody wants to be long and stuff like that too. So I wouldn't say that it's an easy market. And, you know, I think it's, um, and then um, what about, you know, is it a clear direction? Well, the trend's been pretty clear, but, you know, it's been hated the whole way. Like the news every day is like, ah, another disaster. And then the question, you know, what about is, are there some good indicators? So, uh, which is good. And so, uh, and then the next, so the real question here too, because there's two different kinds of trading, right? There's, there's like momentum trading, okay, where you're buying breakouts and selling breakdowns. And then there's, uh, you know, what I call kind of reversion to the mean, okay? And reversion to the mean is, uh, one is if it gets too high, you're shorting it on the way back. But it also, and it's important to realize this too, it also means that, you know, maybe if it gets too high, you take profits and then you wait for the next pullback. That's also reversion to the mean trading. So those are really the only two types of trading. And um, so that, and that's really it. So, so, okay. So, so which style is working is best or, you know, uh, which indicators are working most consistently? And then what about RSI, stochastic and things like that and moving average and pivot points? You know, what, what are, what am I using specifically? So, so the first thing to keep in mind, and this is really, really important to understand is that overbought and oversold um, is to an extent irrelevant depending on the situation, okay? So you'll see that here um, oversold worked, okay? And then you'll see here, um, you know, it was overbought like right here, but it just kept on going, okay? And then it got overbought here and then it kept going for like a while. So just, you know, just overbought and oversold by itself, I think is one of the worst things that you can do. You can really get hurt. But if you can do overbought or oversold at what you know is a key level, okay, then it actually works pretty good. So if you do get overbought at a key level, okay, that's legit. If you do get oversold at a key level, you know, that's legit too. And so the question then just becomes, what are key levels? What about Fibonacci's? Okay, 50% retracement. Is that a key level? Well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't right? What about prior support and resistance? Well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And, and the main thing with prior support and resistance, and this is the thing that I, I think is so critical, is prior support and resistance is great, um, but you also got to remember it's all in the past, okay? Prior support, if we're right here, all the prior support and resistance is in the past, okay? It's not really telling you which levels the market's going to respect in the future. Okay, I wanna say that again. It's not really telling you which levels the market are gonna respect in the future. And if you know these levels in advance, it makes this so much easier. So, so the question then becomes, okay, so what about tomorrow? Like today, the markets you know, started off strong, they kind of sold off hard, they were choppy and closed flat. So tomorrow, what levels are going to hold, okay? And if you look at price action without levels, okay, and this is an old MasterCard chart, right? We'll look at some current charts here too. But if you look at, you know, it can look kind of random. So, you know, it's like, okay, this was a pretty good uptrend. And then here we stopped and then, you know, and then we kind of kept going down and then, you know, we couldn't get through this level. And then all of a sudden we spiked up here and stopped right there. And then we had this nice move and it kind of looks like, okay, well, you know, maybe it's just kind of random, you know, how do we time all that? But all of a sudden, if we put levels in there, okay, you'll see that things suddenly make more sense. And the key is levels that the markets respect, okay? Boom, this level, the market respects this, this level, this level. And look at the sandwich right here. I couldn't get, couldn't get through that. And it's what's important to understand here with this. And you, you, you can see we come back here and then, you know, boom. Um, and, and stop dead in its tracks right there. The thing that's important to understand is unlike pivots, you know, pivots are calculated every day. And every day the pivots are different, okay? These levels don't change, okay? This level pre-split was there forever. This level was there forever. They don't change day to day. They're, they're permanent, okay? And that's a huge difference. And we drill down here to a 15 minute chart. And you can see that if you want to day trade it, you get, you get little more minutia levels in here, okay? So you can actually drill down even more and play these levels, okay? And so that's, that's fantastic here. So what these are is they're called voodoo lines, all right? And I did not create these, but by gosh, I use them. And this is how they work. So the fire line is the most important. 
Okay, that's the strongest one. You don't see them very much. The tree line, which is green, is the second most important. And then the snow line, which is white, is the third most important. And then finally, the skyline, which is light blue, is the fourth most important. You'll notice that the red line is the thickest. The green line, it might be the same width or slightly lower. And then the snow line, a little thinner. And then this one's a little thinner. They're all good, but the market respects the red ones the most, the green ones the second most, the white ones the third most, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as an example, what that means, intraday, the markets might bounce back in here, but on a weekly level, you know, like on a weekly chart, it could get stopped right in its tracks, you know, right there. So, so it's important to remember that. Um, and this stuff's available for, you know, almost any market here. I mean, we can look, you know, real quick on, um, you know, here's Apple on a daily chart, you know, right here. So, you know, we're looking at Apple and if we come over here, here we'll get apples to apples here. So you can see here at uh, one, 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 you know, 145, you can see the different, um, you know, the different resistance levels and stuff like that too, where if we look at this right here, now let me get the, I'll center the symbol here so the charts actually look sim similar. Similar, um, you know. Again, on something like that, it can look a little bit kind of like random. It's like, okay, what's you know what's going on here? But you can see that right here, this advance was stopped in its tracks right there. Okay, wow, there's a line that was right there. Okay, and then this advance right here was stopped in its tracks, and like, wow, there was a snow line there, and and why did it hold right here? Because there's that snow. So so these levels are great because you can plan in advance, right? So like, if we're you know if we're right here, all right, and especially if we got like a squeeze and an RAF buy signal, which I haven't even talked about yet, we can plan with confidence the probability that it's going to advance to that level and not go through it. Okay, so we're not hanging on forever. We got a specific target uh, in place, and so so the question is, is that you know what are my favorite setups using this stuff? And and I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But first, what I want to do is. I want to turn this over to the guy who created these things. And so David, um, he's a certifiable genius. And one time, I think he maybe emailed me three or four times. I don't remember. This was like, gosh, four or five years ago. And I do get a lot of emails from people that are kind of like, hey, check out this indicator. And, you know, I've kind of seen it all, right? So I was like, yeah, that's great. You know, thanks. I've got my stuff. And I forgot what happened, but I was looking at this and I was like, this is really interesting. And then I called him up and we talked. And I was like, okay, this is genius. So, um, so anyway, let me, uh, David, let me, I'll pass this over to you. And if you want to talk maybe for about 10 minutes or so, and, um, and then uh, I'll, I'll come on and then talk about some setups that I have, and then we'll go back and forth. But, uh, you know, maybe if you want to talk a little bit about kind of the method behind the madness, so to speak. Yeah, sure, John. Let me just um, let me get my screens shared real quickly here, and uh, and then we'll get going. Or or maybe it'll end up being the um, uh, madness behind my methods uh, might be a better way to describe it. As you did say, I was um, certifiable, right? Um, in any case, <laughs> um, you know. So so um, I'm actually bringing up Amazon here, and and one of the reasons is you you heard John talk for a minute about. Um, you know the, the benefits of using prior support and resistance um and you know one of the issues if you're dealing with something like amazon which you know keeps making new all-time highs is you don't have areas of prior support and resistance to go off of um so what what you need is some way to try and anticipate where that support or resistance might come in. And so these voodoo lines can do that because, um, because they're very long-term uh, projections, and we'll talk about that in a minute, these exist at levels pretty far away from price. So long before we got up to this, you know, 916 level, um, you know, a, a few weeks ago, there was a line here, and we were ready. Um, I mean, John, you, you were talking about this level as we got close to it. And what did we do? Well, okay, it's not like that MasterCard chart where we stopped right at it, but, you know, we poked above there and couldn't hold, and we came right back down. 
Um, now, this is, this is the important thing. Sometimes these very important levels need the market to back off before it can get through. And what did it need to do? Come right back to one of these prior levels that was also already here long-term on the chart um, and retest it. And, and here, um, you know, it, it did hold before, um, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's get this chart back in decent shape. Um, so you can see here at this point, it did pull back, right, hold, and then it did continue up, and this time it did break through. And you can see it does observe these levels. It bounces against this snow line here for a little bit until it breaks through. And one of the things that I really like about using these is they give us, you know, if, if you, you know, ever read some of the stuff that, you know, for example, Paul Tudor Jones has said, is he said, you know, you really need to have a, you know, a roadmap of what you expect the market to do. It doesn't mean it's always going to do it, but you need to have that roadmap so that you can, you can benchmark the market's progress. So when you, you know, you may believe that, um, you know, that Amazon is bullish and it may run right into this line, but you better then have something that says, well, you know what, if it doesn't hold these next levels, when it comes into them, then you may have to revisit whether that roadmap is right or not, but it did hold um, and it did head up. And, and there, you know, there, there are lots of ways to use this. I traded Amazon today based solely on these voodoo lines and actually this ready aim fire that we're going to talk about. Um, so, you know, the ready aim fire is something that, that I use for, uh, let's zoom in just a little bit. Um, you know, for signals that help me decide whether um, uh, a level is going to hold or not, whether it's, um, you know, wh whether um, this is a spot where I want to try and take a trade. So what I look for, right, and, and I'll go through this pretty quickly. I know John's going to talk about it some also. You sort of the green ones are buy signals. So if you're looking for a buy, you look for a ready and then an aim, and sometimes you get multiple aims. And then once you get the aims, you look for one of these magenta arrows in this oversold area for a buy or in the overbought area for a sell. And you can see, I, I, I don't take every one of them. I take them at predefined levels. So we come down into this level, get an aim when we're there, that's a buy signal right there in Amazon, as, as beautiful as you'll ever, ever get. So all we do is, um, you know, is, is get a nice little pullback into the level and a buy <laughs> signal, and then you go off. Now, I'll show you um, today, because I said, we don't always stop right at these levels, right? But I've built this roadmap, um, and in fact, for folks in the, um, simpler options chat room, we talked about this roadmap yesterday. We talked about how so long as we stay above this um, snow line right up here, then we can still look bullishly at Amazon, but it needs to hold these even lower levels, these skyline levels, in order to, uh, to keep looking up. And we'll use that to benchmark sort of intermediate progress as part of our roadmap. And what we can see today, if we drill in, let's uh, come into a five minute chart here. Well, we did break this, um, this skyline. We had a pretty sharp move today, and I actually know some people who are panicking today. But what, what did we do then after? We rebounded almost as quickly. You can see we didn't stop right at the skyline, but then we came back down and we retested it really very gently. 
right? I mean, if you had a typical oscillator on here, you probably would have seen some really nice divergence uh, on this lower low. You probably had higher lows on your oscillator. For me, I had my ready aim fire, right? So we couldn't hold below here. We popped right back above because it didn't want to be below this level in a symbol that is bullish. And so when we came down here and I got the ready, the aim, the fire, right at a voodoo line level, I knew that this was, I didn't know with certainty that it was going to go up, but I knew that it was a pretty good bet and that it was worth a shot because if it popped down to here, ah, I'd get out. I don't risk very much. Now, I'm primarily a futures trader, but, but I'll trade stocks when I get a setup like this. Um, maybe not heavier, I'll trade the options. I did five lot in, in the options and made 1100 bucks in one account. You know, it's a small account. It's a $30,000 account. Got another account, $26,000 account. I made 1200 there. Trading small size in Amazon, just a day trade, closing it out up here um, because the Dyna range gave me a level right at the end of the day. We got a ready aim fire sell signal. Doesn't mean we don't keep going up tomorrow, but this was just a perfect setup for a quick trade. Um, so in, in any case, um, you know, the, it, it does take a little while to learn how to sort of build a roadmap. There are other ways that you can trade with these. John will tell you some of his. Um, but as you get more experience with them, you'll learn to sort of create that roadmap. We can come in, let me um, see if I've got an S&P chart here. Also, same sort of thing. This was, you know, if this line wasn't here, you might be panicking today, right? When we sold off like this. Like I said, I know people who were, where do we come to? Right to a voodoo line. This is where the S&P stopped this morning. Now, did I buy it here? No. Why? Because I'm a trend trader. First of all, I've already been long. But we had a sharp move up, and then we pulled back down. And, and this was nice and gentle. And I pulled up my ES charts, and I looked for those ready aim fire signals. I looked for, um, uh, I actually had some Dyna range levels on my short-term charts. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit bought this and it headed right up. So, you know, this is just how I build a roadmap of the market. If we, I'm going to remove a few of these voodoo lines. And I know John has some stuff that he wants to show you in a minute. Um, but I'm just going to remove some of the smaller lines because we're going to move to a, a little longer time frame chart. And I don't want them all on there. Um, and just to, to talk about this uh, roadmap and what I mean by that a little more, you know, here on the daily, you know, you can see, right, back here in June, what did we do? We, um, sorry, I messed this up again. Get my presentation tools first, right? So, you know, we held right at this snow line popped right up, up above this other snow line. And similar to Amazon, what did we do? We came back down, we tested a level, it held. That keeps the focus on the upside to run to this very important, not most important, but very important tree line. It couldn't hold this tree line last August. That's what set up this pullback here. But it was just a pullback to get through and, and this also set up classic behavior. We ran right to the tree line, pulled back and made it through. We retested it from above and held. That gave everybody the chance to get in. And we keep working these. And as long as these levels keep holding, yeah, we get pullbacks from them to the next lower degree level, but then it gets through. And as long as that behavior continues, this is bullish. So, you know, even if some political news comes up and slams us right back down into a tree line, if we keep recovering from there, this is still bullish. Now, that doesn't mean you can just be blindly long if you can't hold through where this breaks, right? You need to find pullbacks. 
But, you know, in the short term, we had one of those pullbacks today. We had one of those pullbacks if I put the, I mean, if you remember the lower degree levels, we ran right into one today, as, as we said. And even if you're a wimp like me and you wait for the pullback after it bounces, you can still use that information as a way to get in on this trend. So, <clears throat> you know, that's the basic idea of how to use them. Um, roughly, you know, the, I, I'm an Elliott Wave trader, and I know that not everyone uh, uses Elliott Wave. Um, you know, some people use it on everything. I don't think it works that well on s individual stocks. On the S&P 500, it works great for me. But by looking at long-term Elliott Wave patterns, right, where there's no dispute, one of the reasons Elliott Wave is difficult for people is because there's all sorts of argument about what Elliott Wave pattern is going on up here. So I ignore what's going on up here in creating the voodoo lines. I found a way to look at levels from the past where there's no dispute about the pattern. There's so much dispute. There's so much um, you can't figure out about the pattern in Amazon. that You can't use Elliott Wave to trade it. But I can use Elliott Wave patterns from years ago in Amazon to build these levels and you can see how it creates levels that work right now and that's that's the idea that it's based on and you know you can see by the fact that it works that um that it's a valid technique so um so so that's the general idea behind it but you know we don't want to get caught up in that we want to get caught up in how do we use this to make money because you know that's that's what it's here for so i know john has some more thoughts on that um yeah, let me all show, you know, we'll swap back and forth here. Let me all yeah, show absolutely. a couple things and then um, let's see. And, uh, you know, and it's, you know, it's interesting when, uh, so when David was telling me this stuff and as soon as he said Elliott Wave, I was like, oh God, are you kidding me? Because Elliott Wave is, uh, you know, I, you get 10 Elliott Wavers in a room and it's like you get, you know, 10 different answers in terms of the downside and the upside or if we're going up or down. But as I was talking to David, I was like, okay, this guy applies it differently. He actually, you know, he's using a lot of logic behind it, but hence the name voodoo. So like I always joke that Elliott Wave is just a bunch of voodoo. And obviously it's got, it's a, you know, it's a nice study of crowd psychology, but I, I've always just found that it was always just kind of funny like that. And so hence the name. So, um, so some of the ways, and you know, I saw some questions on timeframes and stuff like that. And so one of the things I was looking at today is, now look, here's the voodoo line, right? We rallied up to the voodoo line, and on a 30-minute chart, we got an RAF sell signal, okay? And we came down pretty hard, and I actually thought this might continue today. But then we got an RAF buy signal and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But as we went into the close today, we're, we're going to wake up tomorrow already overbought again. So... So, you know, we may get another run. Um, I find that a 30-minute S&P chart is pretty valid. You can go down to like a five-minute, but like any, you know, small time frame like that, uh, there's a lot of minutia. Like, I don't really like that. And one of the things to keep in mind is I generally ignore all signals within this box, okay? Where I get interested is that if we get, say, like right here, a purple major buy signal below the box, that typically is pretty valid, especially when uh, paired together with a squeeze, okay? Um, I also saw some questions earlier, you know, does this work with, say, uh, currencies? And uh, it actually works very, very well with the major markets. Um, you'll notice, here, I'll put this on a daily chart just so you can kind of see the same levels there. And, you know, on the Euro, this thing has just been walking and ping-ponging back and forth between the tree line. And then it yeah, pops hey, up to the snow line. Hey, John, go ahead and zoom out so we get November in there. Because, you know, I, I mean, oh, by the way, so, so look, I want to look at that uh, election night. It's just got a wick, but you can see that wick ran right into oh, the Oh, yeah. Line. No, I remember that night. We, I mean, look at this. we were selling, and, and, and folks who were, you know, I mean, we were selling that. We were selling that hard right there. Not because that was the only time we touched it, but we had other things that were telling us to sell it there. And, and where did it run to? The lower fire line right there in December, January. I mean, that was a beautiful run. And that, I'm, I mean, I, if you 
were in that rundown from fire line to fire line with me, you made a lot of money. I mean, just one contract of a six E I mean, that <laughs> was a, was a really good trade. Yeah. And it's, and, and so you, and you'll see, and I found it with the major markets like that, it's, 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 it's fairly substantial. And if we look at even things, you know, like the NASDAQ futures right now, you know, it's like, wow, what are the, the NASDAQ here? It's on fire. What is it going to do next? And these levels have been very, very key. Um, as soon as I can, I can get a, a snapshot of this here. Um, you know, and just in terms of kind of boxing this in. And if you look at this from, and let me hear, I'll just, I'm going to throw these on the daily chart. Uh, here real quick. And if we look at, um, let's see, we got Voodoo. There we go. Um, well, actually, I'm just going to, I'm just going to expand this one out to the daily. So if we look at this, like say from a daily perspective, um, you'll notice here, I mean, look at, this is like one of my favorite, favorite patterns like this. When you come up and remember this red line has been there forever. So we had a squeeze, you know, some over, some, some buy signals here. We're grinding up and man, look at this. We just grind, 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 grind. And I know that when we get to a fire line initially, that this is what's going to happen. And this is a great time to sell iron condors, right? But then when you start building the squeeze and you get even a mid-level buy here, look for the next level. And look at this. We just melt up to the next voodoo line. Okay, you melt up to the next voodoo line and pause. And then when there was this big sell-off here two weeks ago, you know, if you guys remember this, the, the, it fell off like 120 points in one day the last Wednesday or the Wednesday before. It stopped like to the tick on that voodoo line before coming up here. So, yeah, so these things have been, been fairly, uh, fairly substantial in, in my opinion here. Um, Google, we had a, a trade in here not too long ago. First of all, you got this daily squeeze. You come right up into this level, trade side again, trading sideways here. But then once we come back down and test this level to the T, okay, to the T, then, and it may have, I think it was the 78 minute squeeze, maybe it was the 39 minute, but we got the signal, um, went long. And here, I think I took a screenshot of that trade. And yeah, I mean, this was a fantastic trade. And so this is part of, you know, part of the philosophy that I've been following here and that you can see that, you know, my 6x return in my account is that what I'm doing is I'm waiting for situations like this where I have the potential to make bigger trades, okay? I'm not trying to make, you know, one point in Google. I'm trying to find positions where I can do big positions, okay? Not not bet the firm positions, but willing to put 10% of my account into a position based on the setup with the idea that, you know, I've got a handful of eggs in the basket based on these setups and I watch that basket. And I try to do this across a variety of asset classes. Just, it's like, okay, well, if the market rolls over, I've got this exposure in notes and yada, yada, yada. And so anyway, so that's what I've found has worked really, really well uh, in this market. Um, a couple of other... Let me see what questions you guys have here. Yeah, so John, one of them that seems to be coming up a lot in sort of different flavors is there seem to be a lot of lines or, you know, how do I know, you know, whether to care about the fire line or the, the, the tree line? And, and a couple of things to say about that. Um, you know, um, this, this is an indicator that, that sort of has a lot of depth. And what I mean by that is, look, I, I know some, uh, you know, futures traders who um, are already pretty experienced at using support and resistance. They don't care if it's a fire line or a tree line or a snow line. Um, they're like, give me a level that works. I'm going to trade against it. Um, and, and they go and, and they're day trading and, and they're having a blast. And that's great. And if you trade that way, you can use it that way. If you're more of a swing trader or you're using it as sort of I suggested to benchmark progress and understand the direction of the trend, um, honestly, there's a lot of depth there and there's, there's more to learn than you might be able to get in just tonight's webinar, but you will get it as you, um, as you start to watch price move. So, you know, that's the one thing we can't do in a nighttime webinar is, you know, watch it day in, day out for a week or two um, and get, <laughs> get a flavor. Now, there's certainly a guide that comes with it that discusses, um, you know, a lot of the common patterns to look out for. 
um, but there, you know, there's certainly some ways you can use it, you know, just out of the box, like that Amazon trade I showed you today. I mean, that was a beautiful one. And then there are others in terms of learning how to qualify the trend um, and understand the trend um, that you can just get <laughs> as you keep uh, working with it. Yeah, that's, and that's uh, some great points there. And, and some of the things that I've found is that, you know, essentially, like, when you, if you remember, I was talking earlier that green uh, is the second strongest, right? So if green is the second strongest, what does that mean when we get up to that level? And if we go back here and we look at the S&Ps, I want to get both of these time frames here going, is, and, and this is, I, I think, a critical part of this, is that if I see that, you know, I've got a squeeze, right? and we're coming up to a skyline, I'm not too concerned about that. I look at that as a minor pause. So literally, if we're gonna rank these, this is the second strongest, um, this is the third strongest. Uh, uh, the fourth. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It was close, that's the third strongest, and then that's the fourth strongest, and the fourth, the, of course the fire line's not on here. So knowing that this is the fourth strongest, and here's a squeeze, I go, all right, this is, it's just gonna take a pause here. I'm like, all right, it's gonna catch its breath here. It's not gonna get stopped in its track tracks however when it gets to the tree line it did go through it a little bit but it essentially gets stopped in its tracks right and that's what i've found so you know if we're going to pull back here to the skyline you know i'm i you know i'm, I'm going to be looking like okay if we can get a buy signal great i'm going to look at it but i'm looking at this as not as rock solid you know as this up here all right and that that's something that i found to be very very true and if we look at say the nasdaq futures here okay you know i mean this was a, a phenomenal, phenomenal move here, but you can see it just stopped cold. Like here, you know, here, this is a great example here. It comes up, it's like, okay, I got to catch my breath. But the second time it can go through here, eh, I don't even see you. Eh, I don't even see you. But boom, it gets here, it's done. And it was done for all of March and half of May. Okay. Now we got a squeeze, it's ready to go again. Oh, doesn't even blink. Uh, you know, a little bit here, and then finally we get up here. And so this is a, you know, that snow line's another kind of a consolidation point. And I found this happens time and time again. And if you're an options trader, what this means is, is that there's a time to go directional, you know, boom, directional. But man, when you get a situation like this, it's a fantastic opportunity to start selling iron condors and things like that too. I saw someone else talking about or asking about Netflix. Netflix is one that I like to trade as well. And guess what? This thing has been so stubborn in trading sideways. Well, guess what? There's a big old fire line right here. Okay. And it's just, it couldn't get through this. And when it was here, this was not a time to get too excited about directional plays because it's, it's sandwiched in between these two levels. Great time to sell iron condors. But once it finally breaks through and closes above it, okay? You can see this thing doesn't have a meaningful rally until it breaks through and closes above that fire line. Then and only then is it free to melt up to the snow line. And what does it do when it gets here? It stops to the tick, okay? And I've just seen this happen time and time and time again. And it's, it's, it's fairly fantastic. And so most of the key stocks that you like to look at here are in this, okay? Um, so, um, yeah, and so what these and what these lines are is if you know what they are, you can just draw them on your chart. What's nice is with the software, you bring up the symbols that you want to look at, and of course they're already pre-populated on here. So what I do is I go through my list of stocks that I like, right, uh, and markets, and then I can just click on it and say, okay, let's let's look what's going on with the dollar index. When I click that, then. Um, you know, I guess I could actually link that. That would that would be super helpful. So I'm just gonna link that real quick. And if I click on the dollar index, and then boom, it comes up and everything's already pre-populated. Okay, so that, look at this, the dollar index, guess what? It's stalling on the tree line, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm looking for the dollar index to be quiet. If I take a look at the transportation sector, and these levels are already populated, right? And I can see like, wow, it stopped at a dime there, and it's trying to struggle and, you know, getting getting through that. Um, some of the key sectors I've been watching, financials here have been taking it on the chin. 
And you can see we've been kind of stuck between this tree line here. We stopped at the snow line today. I've been watching Goldman Sachs, which is just getting absolutely obliterated here. Guess where it stopped today on a dime. Surprise, surprise on the snow line. I'd look for this if it's going to continue to consolidate for a couple of days, okay, before potentially heading lower. But look at this. These are the kind of trades that this is made for. You know, it breaks down, starts its slow grind up. It just stops on a dime here. If you're already looking at this, even if you're working full time, you know it's like, all right, if it gets up there, I want to sell a call credit spread. I want to buy puts. I want to short the stock, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And that's the kind of stuff that I've found uh, that I like to use it for and stuff like that too. So, so, and um, so I see a couple of questions. Do the voodoo lines incorporate the Fibonacci lines? They do not. So again, these are based on kind of derivatives of well-documented fifth wave highs and lows that are out there already. And then there are derivatives from that. So they're not, sometimes they'll line up with Fibonacci, but they are completely different. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some Fibonacci in there, but it's not your just everyday, you know, just, oh, I'm gonna do a Fibonacci projection or, or, right, or right. retracement. So, um, I mean, it's definitely in there, but, but that's, you know, the the challenge with Fibonacci is always what levels do you you know do you choose to do your retracements on, and um, <laughs> you know if you don't have something systematic, then you know then then there's an issue, and this is based on you know a systematic way of analyzing markets and coming up with uh, um, with levels. Um, and I see someone there had asked about Tesla, and you can see guess what Tesla spend some time trying to get through that 32181 level surprise surprise tree line right tree line and then finally the third time it got through that not when it broke through it just melted up to the snow line this has been a fantastic trade this is one that we did um over the weekend and flipped it out on monday and uh and that was pretty awesome that way so um so that's kind of, you know, that's the main stuff. So let me, let me show you a couple things and then we'll, we'll continue to show more examples. I some people asking like, hey, what is this? How do I get it? Um, all that kind of fun stuff. So what are these? If you go to this link right here, simplertrading.com forward slash star. Now David's last name has two R's. So you can use S-T-A-R-R -R or S-T-A-R. Uh, there's information on these three indicators. So you're going to see um, the RAF, the voodoo lines, and then also something called Diner Range, which David will talk more about, which is pretty awesome. And this is just essentially called this triple strength trade package. And you've seen the results that I've had this year. These are the main tools that I'm using. And you can see a little bit about how I'm using it. Now, if you guys are interested in this, what we're also going to do is that we're going to be doing a three hour live trading session on exactly how to use these tools. And we'll be doing some live trades with you as well. So what does all this mean? Again, go to simplertrading.com forward slash star. So the big, the, the, the main star of this show is the voodoo lines itself. Okay, these are, this is, you know, the most, when I came across these, the most exciting thing that I'd stumbled across in a long time in the markets, because I'd kind of seen it all. These are normally on the site, $1,997. Uh, this is a special opportunity where you can get them at $997, okay? And which is great. There's a small subscription, like 47 bucks a month. That's normally $97. That's how you get all of the different updates and, and things like that as well. Um, and again, what we'll be doing is a three hour live trading session for you on June 5th from 8.30 to 11.30. So you can really understand how to use these things. Okay, so that's fantastic. And then from there, if you wanna get the entire package, you can just get the voodoo lines by themselves. There is the ready aim fire indicator. This to me is, I, I think this is a, I, it's hard for me to look at as chart without it. Okay, I mean, these are just very, very powerful. Again, if you just want that by itself, it's $597. And then one thing, and, and David will talk a little bit more about this, is the Dyna range. These are, I personally use these more for intraday trading. Um, they're very, they're dynamic levels that are pretty fantastic that include extensions and targets and stuff like that too, uh, which are great. So all of these together, um, I'm not sure what 997 plus 597 plus 397, what that adds up to. So I'm just gonna round this to, uh, 1,600 and 400, that looks like $2,000 to me. 
uh, give or take. So if you want the whole package together, uh, there is a discount off of that tonight only. And that is $1,594, okay? So anyway, I just wanna let you guys know that. We'll leave the link up here and we're gonna to continue to stay here and just kind of answer questions. But for those of you that have seen the stuff and said, all right, I've seen John's results on this. I wanna get similar results and I wanna use the same tools. These are the tools that I'm using. Uh, SimpleTrading.com forward slash star. So also if you have any questions, you can email us info at SimpleTrading.com. And of course, call us here at 266-8659. Now, one question that has popped up, and so I wanted to show you guys this as well, is that um, a, a lot of people have been asking about Tastyworks, okay? So we like Tastyworks. We've been starting to use their platform. They have not set it up yet where we can put our indicators there. However, that's the plan. So for those of you that are planning to open up a Tastyworks account, I encourage you to use, if you use this link, it puts our tracking code on it. So then once, if and when we get these indicators created for Tastyworks, then all we gotta do is just do a license transfer. Okay, so if you, all, if you already own the indicators or you're gonna buy them tonight and you think you're gonna get a Tastyworks account, use this link. There's no cost, it's free. All you just fund the account with like $2,000. This platform will save you like 80% in your commissions. You're gonna see us using it more and more, but by going through this link and tagging it for us, what'll happen is then you'll, it'll enable you to uh, freely transfer the new indicators over to that platform, okay? Hopefully that made sense. So what questions do you guys have about this and other examples and, and everything and all that kind of fun stuff that you would like to see? Um, ba, 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 ba. um, so, so John, there's a question here about, um, you know, voodoo lines and Dyna range. So, okay. um, you know, let's, let, let's take a look at that a little bit. Um, and, you know, let's, um, Sure. Do you want to take the screen? Just, and, and yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Um, so, so they're, they're very different. Um, but the, so, so the, um, and, and they're really designed for different things, but let's come in here to, oh, on a, like a 512 tick chart, because I, I love using Dyna range on, um, on short-term charts. So let me just make sure it's turned on. I think I had that hidden earlier. Let's go ahead and get all this turned on. Um, so, <laughs> um, and another question has been, you know, are are the voodoo lines, um, you know, the same on all time frames? Yes, because they're always in the same place. Some symbols need to be updated every few years. Some have been stable uh, for decades, and you know, what we can see is, why did I not turn on some of these studies? Let's check this again. Okay, that's on. Um, so the levels have been here for years. They're gonna show at the same place on a time chart, on a tick chart. Um, if you use, you know, uh, range bars or if you use um, point and figure charts, whatever you use, you're gonna see these things there. Um, and, you know, so if, if you come in here on the ES and you're trading this today, um, right, and we get, so, so one of the things that I really like, and this is, you know, this is gonna look pretty busy, right? Because we're getting a lot of motion here. But if you're if you're looking for something where <coughs> you already have a reason to wanting to to get long, right? What what you get are a ton of opportunities. And on these short term charts, I don't take them all. So even though I've got to run up into this diner range, right? And you can see this recalculates all the time. This is great for scalping on short term charts. Run in, we come to right to a level and we get a ready aim fire sell right at that level. You can scalp this like a friggin' video game all day long. You just gotta take your profits when it moves. Now, would I take this? No, because 
everything we saw when we looked at the long-term S&P 500 chart told me I want to find ways to be long. So we start up, you know, from this low and we pull back. Oh, crap. We pull back here in the afternoon and we come right into a Dyna range level. And then we head up. These Dyna range levels are recalculated all the time. You're not always going to have levels, um, but usually you'll find some way to get yourself in. Um, and and so what I, you know, one of the other things that I heard mentioned is, you know, there tend to be, right, a lot of signals. Okay, I don't take every signal. I don't care about this signal. First of all, it's only a ready, not a ready aim fire. Secondly, it's coming out in space, okay? I don't use the ready aim fire to trade every arrow. What I look for is I look for a setup. A setup could be coming into a Dyna range level, in which case this one I want to take. Now, this isn't contrived. I didn't come in here like knowing this was going to be here like this because um, I actually traded traded this on trade station today where I use a thousand volume chart instead of a 512 tick, but you can see this one didn't work. The one where we had a setup and an arrow did. And what did we do? We came right down. Just like we came down here. Was this a huge move? No. If you were long from here, did you want to take some profits on that signal? Sure. Um, you know, but me, I want to find a way to get long. Dino range, <coughs> pardon me. Ready, aim, fire, get long, we go. Um, you know, so that's, you know, that that is generally the idea. You can trade against the voodoo lines in much the same way, but you could get, especially in very short-term charts, areas like in here where we've got no voodoo lines. Now, on longer term charts, you'll get more of a coincidence of these things, um, but um, they, they really are different things. This Dyna range is going to adapt to the time frame of your chart. The voodoo lines are at the same place on every single chart. So if I'm scalping, even if I have off a 30 minute or an hourly or a daily chart, an idea of my trend, I can drill down and use this Dyna range um, as a way to try and spot um, an entry. So, uh, you know, hopefully that gives you some idea of, uh, of sort of the difference between the two. Um, yeah, so David's saying he uses the RAF with, um, with Eric's tape momentum indicator and he's loving it. Um, and, you know, I, I've actually heard that from a couple of people. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard that's a good combo. So, um, so you're not alone in that. Um, and, and that's another thing is, you know, you just figure out, you know, how to fit these into your style of trading. Because John doesn't use the RAF exactly like I do. You know, you heard me saying, I look almost exclusively for these signals in overbought and oversold. John, who's, you know, used the squeeze his whole life, right, um, pretty much, and, and, and sees the world through the squeeze, he's identified a different pattern using the same indicator, using centerline, uh, whoops, I keep doing that because I think I've got my drawing tool enabled. Um, and I don't, you know, he's, you know, he takes these signals right near the center line when he's got a squeeze because he's discovered they've worked and you can do the same thing and that can be a part of your edge. Um, anyway, that, uh, um, you know, that was kind of that question. Um, John, did you see some others that were coming by that you wanted to, um, to look well, at? I'll show you, I'll show you what I was going to ask you about. So I, I just put a trade on Bitcoin. Oh no. So do you have voodoo lines yet on Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't have voodoo lines yet on Bitcoin, but I, I will do that. I will do that. And unfortunately, so here's the thing, John, I could, I could do it and I could get you some, some levels and give you just sort of a printed chart, but you know, not, you know, Bitcoin isn't available as a, as a symbol on any of the packages, you know, on any of the trading platforms 
um, where we've got voodoo lines. But but yeah, we can. Um, um, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing. You know that that actually is an interesting concept. I mean, if you if you actually could do that, I, I mean, I would play around with it. I mean, I think it's one of those things where this is, you know, and you can see the volume here. I mean, it's, what is it? Eight o'clock at night. Look at the volume on this. This is like, you know, kind of like a time and sales kind of a thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is an insane uh, market that's going on out there. And, you know, whether it's a bubble or not, the, you know, the one theory about this is that it's the only, uh, the only depreciating currency on the planet, meaning because they can only make, you know, a limited amount of this stuff. So over time, each Bitcoin just becomes more valuable. Now, are we really going to go to, you know, $10,000 a Bitcoin or something like that? I don't know. Uh, but it's certainly a popular trading vehicle and there's volume there. And so anyway, that could be, that could be interesting. Um, so uh, in terms of, let's see, oh, so one question that came up is, um, is this a yearly subscription? Okay, and the answer to that is, this, is, this part is not. Okay, so this is a, uh, if I can find my drawing tool, that'd be amazing. So this part right here is a one-time fee uh, for, the, for those all three indicators. And I do think, and I can say unequivocally that these are three tools that can pay for themselves very quickly. That's a one-time fee. For the Voodoo lines, there is a monthly kind of a maintenance fee. It's like $47 a month. And the reason for that is that every month, as like say Amazon makes new highs, guess what? The Voodoo levels above that price need to be updated. And David's always asking us in the room, like, hey, are there other stocks you'd like to add to this? So right now there's, you know, a couple hundred stocks that are on there, you know, almost all the major markets. But then sometimes we'll be like, hey, we like trading NVIDIA. Can you put, can you start calculating the levels for NVIDIA? You know, boom. So that's, so that's what that's for because that's, but otherwise, um, that's just something where you can just kind of keep the latest and greatest levels. You know, if you get the voodoo lines and after a couple of months, you're like, you know what, I, I really don't need the updates. That's fine. You get to still keep the, you still get to keep the voodoo lines as you, as you have them. Yeah. And, and for folks who don't trade stocks, if you only do um, the indices or the currencies or futures, you don't need to do that that subscription. So those are updated much less frequently. I still keep an eye on them every day. I watch the stocks every day. If there's an important stock that needs to be updated, we put an update out. So um, it's, you know, it's really because I'm watching that every single day, um, paying attention to what needs to be updated. Um, if you don't trade the stocks um, and you only trade the futures and, and, and or Forex and or um, want to use it to watch the indices, um, you don't need to pay the subscription fee. Um, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. So questions on, yeah, so does that, okay, that makes sense there on the question. Oh, someone asked, is the website not working? Is anybody seeing that? Is the, is the, when you go to that, oh, it looks like there's an error page. So if you guys in the office can look at that, it looks like there's a, a hosting error there or something like that. That would be, that would be awesome. That always makes it a little trickier to um, do that. Looks like we're, we're crashing the server here. And, and so just a question that's come through a couple of times, um, just to clarify, the other indicators, there is no monthly fee. Okay, this, this fee isn't just because we want to, you know, sit there and say, hey, we can get a monthly fee from everybody. No, we're, we are working, um, you know, monitoring these things all the time that's that's the reason for it um you know it's it's uh and and the other indicators don't need that so there's no fee um it's it's just that simple yeah no and that makes sense um i was trying to think too of uh let's see other you know other examples um one of the things i like to look at too with these things are just the basic sectors so if we look at say xly here you know xly is the consumers and if you look at you know, again, um, things like this where, you know, it, it stops on a dime at this little mogul line and then comes back here, giving you a great entry with a, with a buy signal, right? Um, and then, you know, no surprise that it's banging its head against that level there, right? Or looking at something like Disney. 
and I'm just picking the stocks at random here because I know it's like, and just watching how they move. But in something that's coming down really hard, this is something I've noticed. Like it'll, you know, we, look at this. We spike down to the tree line. And from there, we get the good bounce up, stop there. And then now we're just hovering, 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 next move, gap, you know, next one there. And uh, so, you know, one thing here, like if Disney comes back up to the tree line, I'm shorting it. I'm selling call credit spreads. This is a trade I can plan in advance. Okay. And that's, that's really the key with the blue lines is that, you know, support and resistance are great in hindsight, but that's a trade I can plan in advance because you can see that the lines are kind of going out into the future there. So, so that's something that's pretty fantastic. Um, you know, you can play it on something like the utilities, but I don't really play the utilities because they're so boring. Um, but something like technology, you know, and there's that whole thing about so goes the sector, so goes the stock. Well, if you look at the technology sector, okay, you'll notice here that we stopped at a dime at the snow line, right? We were trading sideways at the tree line, okay? No accident there. And that's the kind of stuff that, you know, for me gets very exciting because it allows me to plan my trades in advance, okay? Um, as we go through and look at healthcare, so healthcare has kind of been in the news here, uh, or uh, biotech, because biotech's just been getting tr uh, trashed, and I've been watching the spiral line here, okay, and you can see that the spiral line here has, has been a kind of a major player in this very volatile market here, and, um, you know, just stuck between these two snow lines, and so if for some reason biotech slams into this spiral line at 280.07, that's IBB, guess what I'm doing there? I'm setting up a bullish trade. I mean, it's, you know, that's that fire line is something to me that gives me a lot of confidence in uh, and I can sit there and I can work that. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, NVIDIA. Voodoo lines for NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, um, you know, again, you won't, what will happen is after a while you won't be surprised at where these things consolidate, right? So you see like for a long, you know, for a while here, we're just do, 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 we're hanging out. It loves that fire line. It's like a big magnet. And then, um, you know, when we got that big earnings move. We melted up to the tree line, okay? And then you can see it finally stopped at the next tree line on a dime, right? And guess where it's stopping now? So these things are, it's just, it's fairly remarkable. Um, you know, I, and I don't know why sometimes I'm still like surprised uh, it's just a, it's a fairly phenomenal kind of a thing to see there. I still am also myself, John. It's just amazing to, to like watch them, you know, even when you've seen it so many times because you, you still wonder why. Um, so, so there've been a couple of questions about how all these things work. Um, and, and it's not something that we can go into full detail um, here. I, I think there's a recording we can get folks um, where I actually talk through um, in detail how Dyna range works if you wanna like know what's behind it, but it's easier just to get the indicator. Um, with with the ready aim fire the best way to explain it is um so so it's like a, a traditional oscillator in many ways i mean you can see it goes up and down um but what what i've done is i've put the oscillator through a statistical transformation which basically accentuates the detail at the extremes uh, at, at the upper and lower edges while at, at the expense of detail in the middle. So it does a better job at finding turning points. That's the, I guess, the easiest way to explain it. Um, and, you know, with <coughs> Diana Range, it is a variation on some Fibonacci stuff, but it's, it's really unlike any, I mean, it's not an auto fib by any stretch. It's sort of just based on a weird market observation I discovered one time with sort of combining uh, stochastics and Fibonacci and, and then played around with it. So one thing that I always try and do, you know, yeah, I, I have a few indicators that I build that I really like, um, but I just, you know, I don't, I try not to build indicators that are like anything else because we've already got those. So pretty much everything is its own, 
unique thing and uh um and uh you know that's that's what i always try and keep doing is building unique and different indicators to let us see the market in in different ways yeah i see uh someone has asked a couple of times like what's the difference between moguls and the diner range the diner range are actually move um throughout the day so they're recalculated based on swings up and down or is the moguls are fixed so the moguls are fixed uh like the voodoo lines so that's a good that's a good question there um all right let's see what else we got here and yeah the sales page it looks it did get overloaded so it sh in uh, theory will be up shortly um, let's take a look at uh, gold and some of the major asset classes here. So gold is one of my favorites as well. We've got, um, you know, this move here almost straight down from 1300 to 1218 stopped on a dime at the tree line. So again, you know, Dave and I were just talking about how it's like, gosh, it's, it's strange when that happens, but it happens a lot. And then when it got here, it's just trading sideways at the snow line. Okay. And that, that's the kind that pattern happens quite a bit. So anytime I see a major kind of a decline into a key level, especially if it's a, you know, two, one or two level, you know, like a fire line or, or a, a tree line there with an oversold major buy, which is that purple button, that is one of my favorite setups when it happens. And in this market, we don't see a lot of that because the market's been so strong. But when it does happen, I do like to pounce on it. Um, oil's been in the news a lot, and you can see that this thing is very, very responsive um, as well. And this, these are great for day trading. If you like to day trade oil, it's like, oh my God, look at this huge puke in oil. Stopped on a dime and then started kind of, you know, trading back and forth there before working back up to its major snow line level. Okay, again, this is the kind of stuff that happens over and over and over again. Um, one of the markets I like to watch on this too is the 10 year notes and the bonds. And if we come back here and we kind of take a look at this, um, you know, we've had some, you know, especially on the 30 year bonds here, is if we take a look at some of the big things that have been happening here with the election and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, it's, it's again, remarkable, just like, oh my gosh, look, it's stopping here at the snow line. And if it pops through this, then we should expect to move up to 156 and three quarters fairly quickly, all right? Um, one of the stocks people are asking about is Facebook. This recent decline that happened in Facebook uh, came down very, very hard and lo and behold, once it hit here, it was done. We didn't get the oversold buy, but we still got a, a what we call a moderate buy signal, which is something we'll talk about more. And then keep in mind, when I do see a squeeze with like a mid-level buy, what I like about this is that I know that that typically will have the power to push it through. And yes, there's typically going to be a pause at the tree line because it's so strong, but generally that'll provide a pullback for people that miss the initial signal to get into the trade and then look for the melt up. And that's the key thing that I like here in this is that between, you know, not so much the skyline, but between the snow lines and the tree lines, often between those levels, there's melt ups and melt downs with brief pauses along the way. All right. And so that is something that's very, very key that I've found uh, in terms of working with that. Um, John, one of the things that's worth mentioning there on that, um, um, on uh, on Facebook is yeah you didn't get a buy there on the daily you you would have gotten a buy on other time frames so um, you know if if you're looking at at really what a, a decline that took about two or three weeks I mean that's that's still something you can trade off the hourly so when that comes in and you know and and you see that kind of action you drill down to a short shorter term time frame um, when you see the tree line hold and you get yourself in. Exactly, exactly. And that's a good point. Um, and David, when there's a new, like if I like email you and say, hey, what about this stock? Or, you know, what about this one? What's the process there? Uh, I know like um, 
like AVGO is one where you'll notice here, this is a good example of, you know, why the $47 a month, where this is one I've just started recently looking at. Okay, I like the stock. So this is one where I'll, I can sit there and email David and say, all right, look, when the next monthly update comes out, is this one that you would consider? And then, day, or what's the process, David, when you're looking at something like this? Because well, sometimes you'll look at something and say, no, this actually isn't a good candidate, or what is the process for something? Yeah, so, so I mean, there, there are a couple of things that, that go in it. I mean, the, the first is there, there's got to be, um, uh, I mean, there, there, there have to be sort of enough swings in the price action and the swings need to make sense. Um, and sometimes they do and, and sometimes they don't. So, um, you know, so, some stocks are just, you know, total disorganized messes. This, this looks like something that, that I could probably, um, probably do. Um, just looking at it real quickly. Um, well, and so, so yeah, because people, people email stuff in and, and it, it does, it, it, it does, you know, it, it usually takes me a day or two to analyze a stock. Um, and, um, you know, so in, in terms of my monthly workflow, right. So I, you know, I, I have, you know, I've got to scan all the stocks that we're currently working with. I don't mean, you know, automated, some sort of scanner. I need to look at all of them and see if there are any red flags. And if there are, I may need to reanalyze it and just convince myself that it's okay and leave it alone or sometimes change the levels. And, you know, so usually I've got a bunch I have to reanalyze. That takes some time. I analyze some new ones. And after I analyze it, um, if I'm sure it's good, I'll add it. If I'm not sure it's good, I might watch the levels for a month or two before I publish it just to make sure, you know, kind of forward test the levels um, and make sure that it's not just something that, you know, looks good and, and curve fitted. Um, so I kind of go through that whole thing before I publish a, a new level and, um, you know, and, and uh, that, you know, it keeps me pretty busy. Well, another thing too um, to keep in mind. So, if you look at GLD, you know you'll notice that there are not uh, voodoo lines on this, and there's a reason for this: is that um, specifically with ETFs, um, some ETFs and their underlying, the ETFs don't necessarily plot that well, and also they respond to the futures. So, if you look at gold here on the left. And then I can come over here and let me um, unlink this, and I'll put GL, uh, er, GLD on uh, the right here. You'll notice that GLD does not have these, but guess what? Okay, if because and the reason it doesn't is it's completely responding to this chart. This is what's driving it. So if gold comes down, the gold futures come down to um, this level. Okay, if the, you know, if they, uh, uh, the gold features come down to the tree line, guess what? This is going to stop right there too. And you'll notice that, you know, this level here, you know, happens to be 115.51, right? And it doesn't really correspond. And what will happen too with something like USO, okay? You look at USO and there's not levels on here. And the reason for this is very similar where it's going to respond to crude oil, but because in USO you, you have monthly rolls, right? And the monthly rolls actually kind of chip away at the value of USO. And so the value of USO isn't really a pure, uh, price action, right? Whereas crude oil is. So if, if you do see some things like this, you're like, gosh, you know, oil's traded so much. Why don't, you know, why don't you do it? Well, that's why. So again, if you see like on crude oil, you know, you never have to trade futures in your life, but if you see that, okay, we're coming down to the tree line here, guess what? It's going to hold. Um, USO here is going to hold. Okay. Other examples of this would be like, say the Euro. Um, I like trading the Euro, but a lot of times when I'm trading it, I'm trading it using the ETF, so I can use equity options on this. Same exact thing. And another reason is that you don't get as accurate, uh, and a lot of people don't realize this, you'll notice all the gaps here. Well, this market trades 24 hours, well, nearly 24 hours. So this price data is more accurate, where this is gonna have a lot of gaps because it's only open six and a half hours. So guess what? If we're gonna slam up to the fire line here, this one is also gonna stop too. 
Another interesting one here, and this is all stuff I've learned just kind of in asking David questions, is that if you look at dollar yen, for those of you that trade currencies here, and if I can uh, accurately put this in here, um, you'll see dollar yen here has voodoo lines, but if we go to the yen futures, they don't. Now the yen futures and dollar yen um, are exactly the same market, but they just trade inversely. So if you look at this, um, let me get these lined up here. November, there we go. So if you see that when dollar yen is going higher, okay, dollar yen is going higher if you're trading spot, well, yen futures are going lower. And again, there's no, nothing going on here, but you'll see that like, okay, when this comes down, and hits the fire line the support then this is magically going to hit resistance okay so a couple of things like that and as you use this more you'll understand and you'll learn the nuances of this and so even just from a straight um you know just from a straight like oh these are voodoo lines i'm going to use them that's awesome what will happen is, is that as you start kind of understanding some of the nuances it becomes you know really powerful i mean quite quite to the point where it's a little i i don't want to say unnerving because it's just like oh my gosh this thing just you know why does this work so well and i always just say especially in trading you know when it's working you just keep using it and i've been using this for four years now and i have just not i've just seen these things happen you know I, it's all about edge right and and what i always say in trading is you're looking for high probability moments in time where you have an edge over the other market participants. And the really the key with this and what I love about this is it promotes discipline, okay? Wait for these levels. Now here's a good example of why the subscription fee. So here's MasterCard. So MasterCard here is a new all time highs. Not a surprise that it slammed into this fire line and spent some time consolidating here. By the way, this is a very powerful pattern. We come up here and we, sl we consolidate around that fire line. The odds of this thing continuing higher are very, very high. And typically, if you match this up with a squeeze or an RFA buy signal, that's telling you that it's ready to go. But you'll see now that we're just in blue sky territory. Well, this is where David has to go back and say, all right, now there's new levels here that I need to put up here. And if you've got trade station, they'll just magically appear on your chart one day. And if you've got think or swim, you'll be sent a new update. Okay, and um, all right, so uh, what about, well, so keep in mind too, the difference between a squeeze like, right, and an RAF. So if we're looking at a squeeze um, indicator, okay, so the squeeze, the, the purpose of the squeeze is telling you like, hey, this thing's been consolidating and now it's ready for the trend to continue. Okay, and the trend then continues. That's what a squeeze does. What I like is when it's doing this and we see this, that we start seeing some, you know, some mid-level buys. Okay, and this thing really didn't even come down very much. So, you know, think of that versus, um, you know, say an overbought or an oversold you know, kind of an indicator there. Um, let's look at uh, Visa. So Visa obviously and MasterCard here are very similar. And I remember this one because we did have a squeeze and we got a really nice RAF buy signal down here. You got the squeeze and it was looking pretty good that way, okay? All right, excellent. Let's take a look. Um, okay. So also it seems to be good news here is that if you are actually would like these and would like to get them, it seems to be that the page is now working. So apologies for that, but it was a fairly popular um, um, heading, a, a fairly popular uh, type of situation there. So again, if you go to simplertrading.com forward slash star, let me know if you have any problems, but then you can go there and grab that. In fact, I will, uh, I'll do this with you. Let's see, click on that and let's see if uh, it's working and there we go. And if you go to choose an option, then what will happen there is that you just pick whichever platform that you're using and then you'll be good to go and then just hit check out. Okay. So hopefully that all makes sense. Um, and again, I did see a couple of questions on the whole thing with um, 
tasty works and again not a huge deal here but just if you are interested okay so again this is for the indicators themselves for you know thinkorswim trade station etc cetera, etc cetera, it's you have been thinking of opening up a tasty works account so what a taste the tasty works account is the new platform from todd and Sosnoff. it's got the cheapest commissions on the planet you know options and all have futures it's really really good if you like doing premium selling and stuff like that too at some point we'll have in um we're going to be working on transferring our indicators over there and if you use this link to open up a tastyworks account you'll have a, essentially a free license to move your indicators over there which was fantastic so let me see uh what questions that you guys have here and it looks like we're good to go with that and would you is it possible to display the chart of the Russell 2000? And uh, yes, so let's take a look at that here. We can look at at TF, and by the way, this is moving over to the CME, so the symbol will change. Uh, and you can see here the same thing, just kind of the, the same levels here. You know, it just got stopped in its tracks here at 1390 with that tree line, and it took a long time for it to generate enough juice to get through that. Um, someone asked, oh, what if you just want one of the indicators? So you can actually, there is the option to buy e each one of these separately as well. And so I'll, uh, I can just bring up the page here. That's probably the easiest. And let's see. If so, if you go to the page, you'll see that there are different options and you'll scroll down here and it's like, oh, okay, I just wanna buy this separately. And then you can just click that one there. And then that will enable you to just buy this one separately, choose which platform that you have, and then you can check out from there. Yep, and there is live trading. Um, it is Monday, I believe it's Monday, June 5th. And so there'll be three hours of live trading. And uh, that way you can at least see in a live environment, you know, how to use these indicators, any questions about setting them up. Um, obviously we'll be doing live trades, I'll, you know, risking our own money as well, right alongside with you so you can see how they work. Oh, the free Tesla for the referrals. I don't think we're eligible for that. I think that's just more for individuals. All right, guys. Well, uh, it is 820. So hopefully we've answered all of your questions. And I will leave this up here. And then again, encourage you if you, you know, you can call us. There'll be, I'll put the, um, I'll put the slide up here with the phone number and, and stuff like that too. And da, da, da. there you go. So if you have any questions, uh, there's our phone number and email address and stuff like that too. And then um, for those of you that are, yeah, for those of you that are, are um, interested in these, I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, I think it's one of those things that you're just gonna, it's, you know, for me, it was such an aha moment to start using tools like this where all of a sudden all this price action didn't really seem that random. It seemed like I was kind of trading on the right side of the market instead of, you know, being beat back and forth like a rag doll. And that part was very, very exciting. Okay. All right. Um, um, I previously had purchased the Voodoo lines and they never fit properly in the various time frames. You know, they do, uh, that may have been something that you just want to make sure that you are um, you have to uncheck a box. You just want to make sure that you want to, you want to uncheck fit to screen. 
you know, fit indicators of screen. Cause if you say fit indicators of screen, it's going to put all the lines like for a 2000 point range and cram them on your chart as opposed to just what's most current. So yeah, that's just uh, you just have to uncheck that in toss or trade station. Yeah. And for those of you too, um, and that's a good point. There's a, I think we do have one spot left for a lab event in Austin. So I'll add that here. Um, if you go to www.simplertrading.com forward slash Austin, uh, we have a live event that we're doing in like two weeks here in Austin. Like it's fun. Uh, you, we're trading live and you know, it's a, it's a really cool thing. And if you really like that kind of mentoring type environment, uh, that is pretty awesome. So, you know, we'll be sitting in, you know, kind of like we'll get the, we'll have cocktail hour. We're going to have a poker tournament. Um, and, you know, most of the stuff we do is online, but this is at an AT&T center in Austin. It's very, very top notch. Uh, simply because it's got amazing internet speed and everybody's got their own kind of desk, their stadium seating, you got your own power outlet. And we've done this before at hotels where it's, you know, the seats are crappy, the internet's crappy. This is like trader's paradise for a live event. And so it's a lot of fun. All right. Fantastic. All right, guys, um, I'll leave this page up here. Again, if you have any questions for us, I will, um, you can call us here at the office, 512-266-8659 or info at simplertrading.com uh, for an email. And I will uh, get my page a little more centered here. And again, this is just FYI for those of you, we do have a lot of people that have been thinking about doing a Tastyworks account. If you use that link, that gets you kind of teed up for the free license transfer and boom from there. So tomorrow, uh, for those of you that don't know, tomorrow morning, I will be on an airplane. So we'll see what that does to the markets. And um, otherwise, you guys have a great night. Thanks for joining us. Hope you found it useful. And we will see you on the other side.